Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harrington and I'm super excited today to share with you in this video a wild mushroom that's not too commonly encountered. It's actually considered to be somewhat rare, but when it is encountered, many people might confuse it for chicken of the woods. And that's a mistake I do not want you to make. And so if you're unfamiliar with chicken of the woods, also known as the chicken mushroom, this is a fleshy polypore mushroom that grows directly on trees. Sometimes it fruits a little away from trees, but it's fruiting from buried wood. It's got an orangish cap and on the underside, depending on the species, it has either yellow pores, bright yellow pores, or white to peachish pores. And to many people, chicken of the woods is a choice edible mushroom. So it's delicious to many people when I really like chicken of the woods. But the mushroom I'm about to show you looks like chicken of the woods to some degree, but it's not. So which particular wild mushroom am I talking about? Well, come on, take a walk with me and I'll show you. Okay, so right over there on that fallen oak tree, you could see these orange polypore mushrooms fruiting directly on that log. And they kind of look like chicken of the woods. I mean, from this angle right here, if I was just walking through the woods, especially at a swift pace without getting a closer inspection, I might just assume that that's chicken of the woods because not too many things look like that in nature. And the things that do, we usually call them chicken of the woods. Now before we take a closer look, I just got to give credit to one person for showing me these mushrooms. And that person is John Plischke. John Plischke is a founding member of the Western Pennsylvania Mushroom Club. I was hanging out with him the other night and he pointed me towards these mushrooms. Personally, I had never seen them in person. I've seen many photographs of them. But remember what I said, they're considered to be somewhat rare. So I knew that I had to see them at least to take a photograph. And then I thought, oh, I gotta film a video on this because they kind of do look like chicken of the woods. So thanks John Plischke for showing me this mushroom spot and thanks for not harvesting all these mushrooms as well. So let's take a closer inspection and see which mushrooms these are. Okay, so check out these big, beautiful wild mushrooms. Don't they kind of look like chicken of the woods? I mean, they certainly did from a distance. Once you get a little closer, Maybe not so much, especially if you're familiar with harvesting a lot of chicken mushrooms, but we're going to get into the differentiating features in just a couple of moments. So there's two big beautiful specimens right here. There's actually a third one, which is now on the ground, all sliced up. And why is this one sliced up? Well, remember when I said John Plischke was in the area and he pointed this mushroom out to me, so I thanked John Plischke. Well, there's a mutual friend of ours that I have to thank as well. and His name is Garrett Taylor, and Garrett was in this area as well, and he actually harvested some of this specimen to bring back to the identification table at our monthly meeting with the Western Pennsylvania Mushroom Club. And he was kind enough to let me apply some potassium hydroxide to the cap surface to see the color change. So thank you, Garrett, and thank you, John, for leaving some of these behind. So which mushroom is this? I know I keep asking you which mushroom is this, and you probably haven't given me an answer yet. So I'm going to give you an answer, and maybe it's an answer you won't like because I don't have a common name for this mushroom. I don't know of any common name for it, so the best I can do is give you a Latin name that I'll use for the rest of the video. And that Latin name is Hapolopolis croceus. This is the Latin name that you're going to see in most field guides. This is the Latin name that most people use when talking about this mushroom. This is the Latin name that you're going to see on most mushroom identification forums. However, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to change that Latin name to a different one because according to newer research, this mushroom probably isn't considered to be a Hapolopolis mushroom. It's probably in another genus altogether. But because most people call this Hapolopolis croceus, I'm just going to use that name for the next couple of minutes, so bear with me until we talk about the taxonomy of this particular species. Now what's really interesting about Hapolopolis croceus, and this is something that I mentioned a few times already in this video, is that it's considered to be somewhat rare and even critically endangered, specifically in European forests. And these aren't my words, these are published words in the scientific literature. So this mushroom just doesn't grow here in North America, it also grows in Europe and in both continents this mushroom is considered to be rare. Why would this mushroom be considered rare? Like what makes a mushroom rare? Why are other mushrooms more commonly encountered? Well, as you can see, this mushroom is decomposing wood and this mushroom is said to be a slow grower. It takes a while for the mycelium of this mushroom to develop and it's considered to be a late stage decomposer. So other mushrooms get into the wood first and start the decomposition process early on in the process. Then this mushroom can take over later. So it seems like the earlier fungi might be able to outcompete Hapolopolis croceus. Also, this mushroom typically decomposes older oak trees and chestnut trees. Well, we certainly don't have a lot of older chestnut trees left at all, or even stumps or logs or anything like that. So that substrate is gone for this mushroom. But also, we don't have a lot of older oak trees either. You can tell that this is an older oak tree right here. It's a rather large tree. This tree was probably at least 100 years before it fell down. So this mushroom typically inhabits older trees, specifically in that Fagaceae family, which would be oak trees and chestnut trees. 
So what are some key identifying features of Hapalopolis croceus? How can we be absolutely sure that what we're finding in the wild, if we're so lucky to find it, is Hapalopolis croceus and not something else like chicken of the woods? Well, as you can tell by looking at it, these mushrooms contain semicircular orange colored fruiting bodies, and these fruiting bodies do not have any stock. So the mycological term used to describe a stockless mushroom is sessile, S-E-S-S-I-L-E. -S -S -E. And the orange color of Hapalopolis croceus is very similar to the orange color that you might see in a lobster mushroom, if you're familiar with finding lobster mushrooms. Typically, specimens can grow up to eight inches across. That's what's most reported in the literature. But what's interesting about these mushrooms, they're clearly bigger than eight inches across. This one right here is probably at least one foot across. And I remember when John Plischke told me about this particular spot, he said not only are there Hapalopolis croceus mushrooms, but there are huge specimens, ones that are rarely encountered. So not only is this mushroom hard to find in the wild because it doesn't fruit that often, but it's rare that you find a fruiting body this big. So this is one of the biggest specimens that you'll probably ever see. The texture of this mushroom is somewhat soft when fresh, though it does become corkier when dry. And the surface of the cap is sometimes occasionally finely velvety. Now this mushroom is a polypore mushroom, so the underside of the cap contains numerous pores, and these pores are angular and somewhat large. So you don't need a loop or a hand lens in order to see these pores. And the color of the underside is this beautiful reddish orange color. The spore print of Hapalopolis croceus is white. And what's really crazy is that you can see the spores coming out right now. It's ejecting its spores right in front of me. It looks like clouds of smoke, but these are spores coming out. I'm going to try to capture this on film so that you can see it. You're not always going to see this with a lot of mushrooms. You'll see it with some mushrooms. You don't always see it with polypore mushrooms either. So this is kind of a rare opportunity to observe these clouds of spores just coming out underneath Hapalopolis croceus. Now, because we've been talking about chicken of the woods so many times throughout this video, I think we need to differentiate between this mushroom, Hapalopolis croceus, and chicken of the woods. So remember, chicken of the woods represents a lot of different species in that late porous genus. The ones that commonly grow here in eastern North America on deciduous wood would be late porous sulfurous and also late porous cincinnatus. Both of them are edible mushrooms for most people. Some people can't tolerate them, but most people can tolerate them whenever you do cook them. Now, late porous mushrooms are typically thinner fleshed compared to Hapalopolis croceus. I mean, this thing is rather thick right here. Chicken of the woods, typically thinner fleshed, but the key difference is on the underside. When you look at the underside of a chicken of the woods mushroom, the pore surface is much more closely spaced together. You don't really see all these pores with your naked eye unless you're using a hand lens or unless you're using a loop. Whenever you look at Hapalopolis croceus, these pores are more angular, they're more spread apart. So you can really see the pores spread apart on Hapalopolis croceus. Also, the color of the underside is different. With Hapalopolis croceus, the underside is this reddish orangish color. With chicken of the woods mushrooms, depending on the species, if you're looking at late the poor sulfurous on deciduous wood, that underside will be bright yellow, especially when it's fresh. Whenever you're looking at late the poor cincinnatus, another chicken of the woods mushroom associated with deciduous wood, the underside of that chicken of the woods species is white or peachish. So Hapalopolis croceus, bright reddish orangish underside with chicken of the woods, it's either yellow or white or peachish, depending on the species. Also, the ecological roles of the two fungi are different. Now, both of them act as saprotrophs or parasitic fungi. So if they're growing on living trees, they're considered to be mild parasites. If these are growing on dead trees, if the tree has already fallen over, like we see right here with this fallen oak tree, then they act as saprotrophic fungi and they're breaking down some of the woody material and some of the carbohydrates. But the ecological roles are a little different. With Hapalopolis croceus, this mushroom is considered to be a white rot fungus and white rot fungi through their mycelium, through the enzymes secreted by the mycelium, are able to degrade lignin in the wood to a smaller degree some of the carbohydrates found in the cell walls, including cellulose and hemicellulose. With late the porous species, which are chicken mushrooms or chicken of the woods, those are considered to be brown rot fungi. And brown rot fungi, through their enzymatic secretions in their mycelium, attack cellulose, but they do not significantly degrade lignin. So the lignin is modified, but not considerably removed, and the work of brown rot fungi results in a brownish residue in the wood that breaks into cubicle fragments. Now there is one more mushroom that I'll compare Hapalopolis croceus to, and that is another member of the Hapalopolis genus, which would be Hapalopolis nidulans, or Hapalopolis rutilans, the tender nesting polypore. Now I recently talked about the tender nesting polypore in depth in a video titled 10 Wild Mushrooms. We talked about boletes and polypore mushrooms and tooth fungi and others, so you can watch that video to learn more about the tender nesting polypore. It features more brownish colors overall, 
It's got a brownish underside, and it's a pore surface, so it is a polypore mushroom. But the key difference between Hapalopolis rutilans and this one right here, Hapalopolis croceus, can be seen whenever you apply potassium hydroxide or KOH to any of the surfaces. When you apply potassium hydroxide to the tender nesting polypore, Hapalopolis rutilans, all surfaces will turn lilac or lavender colored. It's one of the few mushrooms that will do that. Whenever you apply potassium hydroxide to Hapalopolis croceus, it turns a deep red color on all surfaces. So deep red color on Hapalopolis croceus and a lilac or lavender color with Hapalopolis rutilans. So if you have potassium hydroxide, just apply it to the surfaces and you'll see instantly which mushroom you have. Okay, so before we get to taxonomy of Hapalopolis croceus, let's discuss edibility or inedibility or toxicity of this mushroom because I realize I've been talking for a long time without mentioning anything about the edibility status of this particular species, but there's way more to this mushroom than just whether can you eat it or not. And I wanted to cover that information first because it's still really fascinating. So thanks for making it this far. Let's discuss edibility. So if we assume that this mushroom is still in that Hapalopolis genus, we might be cautious about consuming this mushroom because Hapalopolis rutilans or Hapalopolis nigilans, that mushroom that we just discussed, the tender nesting polypore, tender nesting fungus, is toxic. It's one of the few toxic polypores because it contains a compound in significant concentrations known as polyperic acid. And polyperic acid can lead to central nervous system dysfunction, it can lead to kidney dysfunction and liver dysfunction if ingested in significant quantities. And up to 40% of the dry weight of the tender nesting polypore is polyperic acid. So if this mushroom is in the Hapalopolis genus, we might be cautious about consuming it because it might contain polyperic acid. So does it contain that toxic compound in significant concentrations? Well, I haven't really found too much information on it. It doesn't seem like it's reported in the literature. All the information about toxicity associated with Hapalopolis is just Hapalopolis rutilans or Hapalopolis nigilans, not this one right here. I can't find anything in the books. I've talked to people. I've looked through the scientific literature. We just can't find a lot of information on any polyperic acid found within Hapalopolis croceus. So what I'm going to say is don't eat this mushroom because we just don't know. Almost every field guide and most people that you talk to will say that this mushroom is inedible. Don't eat it because it's just much too tough. It's much too corky, especially as it ages. Even when it's young though, it's still much tougher than a chicken of the wood species. You can see how thick these fruiting bodies are right here. So this mushroom is inedible and potentially suspect, but we really don't know how much or if any polyperic acid this mushroom really contains. Okay, so now onto the really, really, really good stuff, the taxonomy of Hapalopolis croceus. And if you've made it this far in the video, then I really applaud you. You sat through a lot of information, a lot of detailed information in order to hear about its current name, in order to hear what this mushroom might be related to. So its current name, according to most people, is Hapalopolis croceus. That's the name we've been using throughout this video. And over the past couple of centuries, this mushroom has been shifted around various genera. Dating back to the 1700s, we see this mushroom has been in the Boletus genus. So this has been a Bolete mushroom. We see it's been in the Tyromyces genus, the Polyporous genus, even the Inonotus genus. Inonotus houses the Chaga mushroom. In 1933, this mushroom was given the name Hapalopolis croceus. But before that, in 1920, this mushroom was given the name Orantiporus croceus. And Orant means orange. And croceus, we didn't even talk about croceus, but croceus means saffron colored because of the saffron colored or orange color of this mushroom. Well, an interesting article came out in December of 2016 in the journal Mycokeys. And in this journal, the researchers said that Hapalopolis croceus isn't in the Hapalopolis genus, that Hapalopolis in the strictest sense contains about four species. And this mushroom should be Orantiporus croceus, that former name that was given in 1920. And what's interesting is that Orantiporus and Hapalopolis are in different families. So Orantiporus is in a family known as the Meruliaceae family. And Hapalopolis is in the Phanerochetaceae family. Two different families, but they're still related in that they're in the same order of fungi, which is the Polyperales order. So it seems that the most currently accepted Latin name is Orantiporus croceus, not Hapalopolis croceus, even though Orantiporus was an older name given in 1920. And so most people will still call us Hapalopolis croceus, and maybe it will be shifted back into Hapalopolis in the near future. So it seems that this fungus is in a current state of taxonomic flux, and that's true with a lot of other wild mushrooms. But honestly, you can call this whatever you want. 
You can call it whatever you want. The mushroom doesn't really care. Even if you make up a common name, that's perfectly fine with me because you know what? Even all Latin names are made up as well. So call it whatever you want. Aranthoporus croceus might be the most currently accepted Latin name. But if you want to talk to a lot of people about this mushroom, they're probably going to recognize Hapilopolis croceus as the current name. But like I said, call it whatever you want. So we covered a lot of information about this incredibly fascinating fungus right here that some people call Hapilopolis croceus, some people call Aranthoporus croceus. And again, you can make up a common name for it, maybe orange creamsicle or orange pancake on an oak tree. Whatever you want to call it, it's perfectly fine with me and it's probably fine with a mushroom as well. If you do find it, consider yourself lucky because it's considered to be rare and critically endangered in some countries. And I don't see it too often. Like I said, this is the first time I've seen it. When I say I don't see it too often, I mean I don't even see a lot of photographs of it because people aren't really reporting findings of this mushroom. So I'm really excited to find it today. Thank you again, John Plischke. Thank you again, Garrett Taylor, for pointing out this mushroom and leaving some behind. Remember, this is not chicken of the woods. It's not late to pour sulfurious. It's not late to pour Cincinnatus. It's either Hapilopolis croceus or perhaps even Aranthoporus croceus, an orangish shelf-like polypore mushroom that typically grows on decaying oak trees or chestnut trees typically the larger oak trees or chestnut trees. So thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate it. If you learned something and you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. You can also head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter. We can also stay in touch on Facebook and Instagram at Learn Your Land. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next video.